what happens to the vapor pressure of a liquid when you add a little bit of solid to it. That's what we're going to explore in this video. All right, let's start with something that you can experience wherever you're at. I'm going to take pure solvent, let's say water, in two of these flasks, A and B. Now, if I set up a contraption to measure their pressure, that looks something like this. You know, I fill something in the middle and that you see that the levels are the same. This is like a crude manometer you can build at home. Since the line is the same, you know the pressure is the same. As soon as I add a little bit of solid to it, I'm going to call it a non-volatile solute, which is the same as a solid, right? A solid is not volatile. The one that I'm adding here is not volatile. And it's a solute. The solvent here is water. Right away, you'll see there's a change in this level and the pressures are different. Now, if you know how to read this, it's clear that this is pushing this down, the right hand side B is pushing this down and the right hand, the left hand side is moving up, which means that the pressure here gets lowered. What pressure? Vapor pressure. We're going to try and understand this with some math. It's fascinating. It doesn't matter what kind of solute you add. It only depends on the number of particles, which is what we will study in later sessions. But let's take a step back. How do I find the boiling point of water? Well, I boil it and uh, note the temperature. That's it, right? But what's happening behind the scenes? I need to raise the vapor pressure of pure water, the solvent, to be equal to the atmospheric pressure. That's when the liquid boils. The moment I add some solid to it, huh? what happens to its boiling point? So a relevant question to ask is, how much solid am I adding? It's a good question. Okay, say that it is known to you that the amount of solid is, is, is told to you. Okay, great. Then with that, can I say with certainty that the boiling point will increase or decrease or will it remain the same? That's what we're going to try and answer with this once we understand the math. Remember again, I am adding a non-volatile solid to this. Okay, so how much solute added is known and it's a solid we're adding. This is a binary mixture which means there's just that solid and the pure liquid solvent that is mixed. So you know the drill, one is solvent, two is solute. To be able to answer this question, how much? I'm going to talk about mole fraction, which does not matter as to what the mass of content that's being added, but rather the moles. I know there's a relationship between it and this is important, okay? So I'm talking about one, which is the solvent. I know we are adding solute, because I'm adding a little bit of solute, the mole fraction of X1 would reduce, right? Now say if it is just pure solvent, in that case, X1 will be equal to 1. But the moment I add a little bit of solid, this X1 will start getting to be smaller. This is obvious, right? Okay, cool. Empirically, it is known that P1 is going to be proportional to X1. What is P1? It's the partial vapor pressure of 1, which was the solvent right here. Okay. And the proportionality constant happens to be P1 naught, which is the vapor pressure of pure 1. This only works for volatile components. And this is where we have the answer to the question that we asked in the starting of this video. This empirical relationship is known as Raoult's law. I've covered this in the another video as well. Now, does anything else happen over here? Or this is it? Is this the only thing you need to know when you're adding a solid into a liquid? Till now, yes. Why? Because a solid is non-volatile. So there is no concept of P2, right? There's no pressure exerted because of the solute or the solid in this case. So let's plot this on a graph to see how it looks like. If you've seen my other video on liquid, liquid solutions, you know what's going to happen already. And maybe you are excited to give me the answer to the initial question, what happens to the boiling point? If not, don't worry about it. We're going to cover this in its entirety. We're going to plot vapor pressure of the whole system versus the mole fraction of the solvent. Why the solvent? Because solvent X1 mole fraction is what decides P1, which is the vapor pressure of everything. Okay, so as the mole fraction of solvent increases, the pressure, the total pressure increases given by this beautiful orange line. Okay, so I'm plotting with x1 equal to 0 on the left hand side and RHS part is x1 equal to 1. 
and the total pressure is going to be just equal to P1 because P2, I'm going to say this again and again, does not exist. Why? Because this is a non-volatile substance, solute in this case. So P total is going to be just equal to P1 because the solute is non-volatile. All right. So I think we already know what's going to happen because P1 is always going to be either lower than or equal to P1 naught, which means that I'm always going to have to heat the liquid or in this case, the whole solution, right? More than I did before to get to the atmospheric pressure, which means that the boiling point is always going to be elevated. This is a beautiful conclusion right over here. And check out the next video on boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and all, all other fun properties that only depend on amount of the solute. A quick hint here, that is called colligative properties.